good morning, everybody. Um, so I did put up a playlist if you're interested in some music. It's a little uh, 80s blend today. I um, was feeling the 80s music. So um, we're going to get started in child's pose, and then you can press play whenever you are ready for music if you want to get started with some um, you know, quiet, that's totally fine. Again, this is your practice. So use music just as an extension of your practice. Um, the cat is extra needy today. So if I have to shoo the cat, don't mind me. Um, but we're going to get started in child's pose. So toes together, knees go out wide. And then start to let your torso and your forehead just start to melt down towards the mat allowing it to just stop wherever feels good for you. <laughs> Letting your fingers start to walk out long. Take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, just feel your body start to settle in to your practice. Maybe you start to notice the parts of your body that are connecting with the mat. Maybe you start to notice the parts of your body that are connecting with your body. Just starting to bring some awareness into the physical body, starting to drop out of the mind starting to create this mind-body experience. Maybe you start to take a scan of the mind, noticing how your thoughts feel after maybe a long week, as we go into the weekend. And then allow the thoughts just to become like a cloud. Something that passes, you acknowledge that it's there without any sort of attachment. You're not labeling it as good or bad. You're not sending energy into the thoughts. You're just letting it be and then you're letting it pass on by just the way a cloud moves through the sky. And then start to drop down into your body, noticing how it feels. Start to notice where there's some space that you can start to send the breath into. Noticing what feels good this morning. So oftentimes we start to scan to find what feels sticky or maybe what feels a little bit um, tight to get started on a Saturday morning. But start by seeing if you can find what really feels good. And see if you can breathe in and out of that space, sending that goodness out to the rest of the body. And then start to bring your awareness into the breath. Noticing how it's had its gentle rhythm in and out this entire time, even though our awareness was elsewhere. Start to create your breath as an anchor, this touchstone that you can return back to if things get tough. Or if you just need a moment to resettle, to recenter. If you wish to set an intention, you can do so now. As you breathe in, let that intention fill you up. And as you exhale, allow that intention to expand out. And as you continue to do this, just start to lengthen your breath in whatever way feels best for you. So starting to weave those inhales into your exhales as your exhale weaves into that next inhale. And whatever breath you choose, make sure it's one that you can sustain throughout practice, one that feels like an anchor that you can come back to, that steadies you as we move and as we flow. 
as you're ready, start to walk both hands off towards the right, bringing that left palm on top of the back of the right hand. Start to ground down through that left hip, feeling that expansion through the left side of the body. Start by just pausing wherever you settle. And then see if you can start to crawl your fingers out just a little bit more, creating a little bit more length as we settle in here. Continuing to smooth out that breath that you've started. Maybe it's just making that exhale a little bit longer. Maybe it's that ujjayi breath. As if you were fogging up a mirror, that audible ocean-like sound in the back of your throat. Feel any sensation that's present in the body as we expand through that left side. Take one more deep breath in. And on your exhale, walk your fingers over towards the left. See if you can create some length as you go. So make this transition just as active as the posture. Right hand finds the back of the left hand. Start to let that right hip melt down into the mat. Feel into the side body on the right side. Maybe you start to just notice subtle differences. Again, letting this acknowledgement be like clouds. We see that it's there and then we let it move on by without labeling. Finding that breath going from your fingertips all the way down into that right hip. Walk your fingers out just a little bit more, feeling a little bit more space in that side body. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, start to come back through center. Once again, walk your fingertips out just a little bit more and just melt down into the mat here for just a moment. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, prepare for movement. And on your exhale, come up to a tabletop. So your hands are gonna be placed underneath your shoulders. Knees are gonna walk in underneath your hips. Your tops of your feet are pressing down firmly into the mat. And then find your foundation first. So come, bring some awareness into your belly button and see if you can bring that belly button in and up, feeling that pelvic floor engage. Start to draw your shoulders forward just a little bit, spreading through the collarbone. Gaze is straight down at your thumb, so we're keeping a nice long neck. Just notice what it feels like to just sit in this foundation for just a moment. The pits of your elbows are spiraling towards the front of your mat and then find any movement that feels good so maybe you start to cycle through some cat and cows dropping your belly and then rounding your back maybe you continue to get into that lateral body by you know creating some side bends maybe you find some barrel rolls with the chest maybe you find some big rolls through the hips just start to connect into the wisdom of your body and notice what sort of movement it means to warm up the spine, finding some flexion and extension. Just moving with what feels good to you and notice how the body kind of intuitively knows what it needs to start waking itself up, starting to send that energy throughout the subtle body and the physical body. Once this feels complete, come back to your neutral tabletop and then connect back in with that foundation again. So spreading those fingers wide, feet are pressing down firmly onto the mat, pulling that belly button up and in, so keeping a nice active core, really spinning the pits or the eyes of your elbows forward. And then we're gonna come right into some core work and then some balancing work. So take a deep inhale and on your exhale, press the tops of your feet down firmly into the mat and hover your knees about one or two inches off the ground. Gaze stays down at your thumb. So again, keeping a nice long spine, keep that belly button pushed in to the spine. Breathe here, remembering that the breath is an anchor. Take one more inhale, and as you exhale, release your knees down towards the mat, pausing here for just a moment, taking a moment to notice how that felt. Option to keep your feet flat on the mat, or maybe you start to tuck your toes and find a little bit of a different variation. So take a deep breath in, preparing for movement. Exhale, lift up, hovering your knees once again. 
And then drop into the body. Notice what it feels like when you have your feet flat versus when your toes are taut. Subtle differences, but can make a big difference in how we feel these postures. Take another deep breath in. Exhale, release back down, taking a moment to pause. From here, we can continue to just keep this hover. If you want to work with a little bit of balance, we're going to play around a little bit. So follow me if you want to explore, if you want to find a child's pose, if you want to just work on that core, your practice. So do what you want to. If we want to do some balance, follow me. So go ahead and activate that core. Once again, belly button pulls up and in. Toes are tucked, and we're going to come back to that hovering of the knees. Now start to ground down through the toes, pick that left hand up, feel this balance here, feel the strength in your right hand, and then start to hover your right toes, and then you're gonna kick it towards the left side. So kind of coming into this ninja kick, and then we're gonna come back to center, reset, start to hover that right leg, or sorry, right hand, start to lift that left foot, and then kick it off to the right, swiveling the hips as you go. And then coming back to center. And we're gonna just smooth this out. So right, left hand lifts, right hand kicks. Coming back to center. Right hand lifts, left foot kicks. Coming back once again. See if you can continue this core engagement as you find two more rounds. Noticing the subtle balance, the extra core engagement, the swivel of the hips. This is a very active posture. Really good for just kind of some organic movement. After your second round, coming back to this bear crawl, toes are tucked, lift your hips high, finding that down dog. So first down dog of your practice, adjust as you need to. Fingers are still spreading wide. Maybe we find um, some pedaling of the knees and the heels. Finding a deep bend in the knees, just starting to find some movement. So that way we can fall into some stillness. Notice if you still have that nice deep breath. And when you're ready, find stillness in your down dog. So maybe that's still a generous bend in the knees to warm up the hamstrings, letting your head hang heavy. Just noticing the difference between movement and stillness before we find movement again. So on your inhale, you're gonna roll forward, finding your plank pose. So shoulders are over wrists. We're extending out long, hug that core up and in. Start to bend your knees deeply, sending your hips back, and then lift up into your down dog once again. We're gonna find this again. Inhale, we roll forward to our plank. Exhale, we bend our knees, send our hips back, and then up high down dog. One more, inhale, roll forward plank. Exhale, bend your knees, send your hips back, and then send them up high, pausing here for just a moment. Start to ground down through that left foot. Inhale, lift that right heel high. And then start to bend your knee and open your hips. So find some movement here. Maybe you start to circle that right knee one direction, and then the other. Inhale, extend that right leg out long. Exhale, hug it up into the chest and step it through between your hands, low lunge. Maybe find a generous bend in that back knee as you can bring that heart space forward. Drop that left hip down, pulling that right hip back so we're keeping a nice squaring of the hips here. Left hand plants as we sweep that right hand up, finding a low lunge twist. Continue to draw that right shoulder back, seeing if you can open it up just a little bit more. Pull that lower belly in, creating some space. Take one more deep breath in. Exhale, right hand releases to the inside of the right foot. And then you're gonna walk your hands to the long edge on the left side, spinning the right toes. So your feet make a number 11, wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, find a lift through the chest. Exhale, fold forward. So finding kind of this ragdoll in this wide-legged forward fold, maybe you reach for opposite elbows and just let yourself hang heavy here. So again, find some movement so that way you can settle in stillness. You can keep a nice bend into the knees. That just helps us get into the hip flexors a little bit more. Let your head hang nice and heavy. One 
Wherever you are, release your fingertips down to the mat. Walk them out, finding a halfway lift with your chest. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, start to walk your hands to frame your front foot, spinning your toes to pace the front of your mat. Stepping back, finding your high plank. Pause here. Press back through the heels. Pull that belly body up and in. Gaze is towards the front of your mat, keeping a nice long spine. Inhale, we drop our knees down towards the mat. Exhale, we lower all the way to the belly. Elbows are pointing straight back. We untuck the toes and scooch it back when we arrive. We're going to find a wider baby cobra. So start to bring your hands out um, and tent your fingers here. And then on your inhale, you're going to lift up. So you're going to feel kind of this wider um, baby cobra. And then you're going to drop your right shoulder in and look over that left shoulder. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, drop that left shoulder in, looking over that right. Inhale, brings you back up to center. Exhale, release. Bring your hands back underneath your shoulders, coming back to tabletop, and then up into your down dog once again. Pausing here in down dog. Start to ground down through that right foot. Left foot sweeps up. Bend the knee, open the hip, and then find whatever movement feels good to you on this left side. As you're ready, inhale, extend that leg out long. Exhale, hug it up into the chest and then step it through for that low lunge. Generous bend in the back knee allows you to bring that heart space forward and then start to bring that left hip back along the right hip to roll forward here. Pause here for just a moment. Then plant that right hand, sweep that left hand high, low lunge twist here. Pull that belly button in, see if you can twist just a little bit more. Again, we're just warming up, so be nice and gentle. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, release your left hand to the inside of your left foot, spinning those toes to frame the long edge of your mat, wide-legged fold on the other side. Again, hands can be grabbing elbows. Maybe you start to explore grabbing opposite um, grabbing your ankles or maybe your calves, just whatever allows you to just start to fold in here. Wherever you are, start to release your fingertips down towards the mat. Walk them out, finding a halfway lift with your back on your inhale. Exhale, start to crawl forward, framing your front foot, spinning your toes. Send that front foot back to that plank. Pause here for just a moment. And then as you're ready, drop your knees down and on your exhale, lower all the way to the belly. Once again, untucking the toes, setting up for that cobra. Tend your hands out a little bit wider. Inhale, we find a lift. Exhale, drop that left Shoulder down, looking over the right. Inhale, lift back up. Right shoulder comes down, looking over the left. Inhale, lift up one more time. Feel that expansion in the spine. Exhale, lower back down. Hands frame your shoulders. Inhale, back to tabletop. Tuck your toes. Exhale, we find down dog. From here, we're going to move right into our sun ace salutation. So on your inhale, bend your knees and your gaze high. Exhale, make your way to the top of the mat so you can step, walk, or hop. Inhale, we find a halfway lift when we arrive. So draw your shoulder blades together, create a flat back, gaze stays down. Exhale, forward fold, letting it go. Inhale, sweep nice and high, finding Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Find a lift of the ribs out of the hips. Exhale, we fold it forward, letting it go, bringing it right back down. Inhale, we find that halfway lift, so fingertips on the mat or slide them up to your shins. Exhale, release the hands, step back, finding that plank once again. Option to drop the knees as we did before, or maybe this time as you exhale, you find your chaturanga lowering halfway down. Inhale, finds an up dog as we flip to the tops of our feet, draw our chest forward. Exhale, brings us back to that down dog. We can always drop our knees moving through cobra, or keep them lifted moving through chaturanga and up dog. Inhale, put a bend in your knees and your gaze high. Exhale, make your way to the top of the mat in whichever way feels best to you. Inhale, find a halfway lift as you arrive. Exhale, we fold and we let it go. Inhale, sweep nice and high, finding Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Exhale, release, hinging right back down. Inhale to a halfway lift. 
Exhale, plant the hands, step back, move through your vinyasa by dropping your knees, finding cobra, or lowering halfway down for chaturanga, inhaling to an up dog. Either way, we need back and down dog, finding this one more time. Inhale, put a bend in your knees and your gaze high. Exhale, make your way to the top of your mat. Whenever you arrive, the inhale is to a halfway lift. Exhale, we fold and we release. Inhale, sweeping nice and high, ground down through the feet. Keep that core engagement. Exhale, we fold forward, hinging at the hips, drawing the hands through center. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, moving through your vinyasa. Also knowing that these are always optional because we're always going to meet back in down dog. Take a moment here in your down dog, finding two or three deep breaths. Letting the body and the mind integrate what those sun salutations just did for that. As you're ready, take a deep breath in. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, let that right heel high. Bend the knee, open the hip once again. Really draw that heel into the glute. And on your exhale, you're going to draw that knee towards your left elbow and see if you can just bring it as close as you can. Inhale, we bring it back to that three-legged down dog. Exhale, we step it forward, finding our crescent. So maybe you walk that back foot out a little bit more, sweeping those arms overhead once you feel stable, and then settling into that bend in the front knee. So the crescent, we want to roll the shoulders up towards the ears and then let them slide down the back. So really creating some distance between the shoulders and the ears. I like to make my arms a little bit more of a V. It helps to release the shoulders down a little bit. Really press back through that back heel. So back leg can have a bend in it if you need to or we straighten it whenever feels good here. Right hand is gonna reach for the left wrist Inhale, lift up, finding space through the ribs. And on your exhale, we're going to find a side bend towards the right. Continue to energetically hug your inner thighs together, creating some stability. And then from here, we're going to make a circle. So go nice and slow, starting to sweep your hands towards the front of your space. Think cat-like back as you round your back, sending it off towards the left. And then think cow as you start to Drop your belly forward, creating just a little bit of a back bend. Again, go nice and slow, feeling this expansion through the spine. Palms come to touch. Inhale, find a little bit of a back bend. Exhale, revolve crescent. So start to bring your left elbow down towards your right knee. Maybe it hooks on the outside of your knee. Maybe it finds the top. Maybe it's just kind of in that general direction. Start to pull that lower belly in and then see if you can twist just a little bit more. If this doesn't feel good on your body, you can always stay upright. You can also extend your arms from front to back. You can also always drop that back knee. So many options here. Wherever you are, take a deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, start to release your hands to frame your front foot. Exhale, step back, lowering into your chaturanga, inhaling to your back bend of choice. Exhale, we found a down dog. Ground down through that right foot, left foot lifts on your inhale, bend the knee, open the hip, draw that heel in towards the glute, maybe you find a little bit more opening. Take a deep breath in, and on your exhale, left elbow finds the left knee, finds the right elbow shifting forward just a little bit. Start to release that leg back out long, three-legged down dog, and then step it forward, finding your crescent. Find your foundation first and then sweep up and settle in. There's never any rush to this. Create distance between your shoulders and your ears. Bring awareness to that belly. See if you can pull it up and in. Bring your hands to your ribs here. Notice if you're really flaring out, kind of creating a little bit of a back bend. See if you can just draw it in a little bit more, allowing the scapulas to slide down, pulling that lower belly in, sinking down just a little bit more. Left hand is going to reach for the right wrist. Inhale, we find length. Exhale, we find that side bend. Really find that foundation and then start to circle. So sweeping your hands towards the front of your space, hollowing out your belly, then cat-like back. 
sweeping over towards the right and then rounding out, coming back where we started. Hands pressed together. Inhale, we find a back bend. Exhale, we twist, finding our revolve crescent. Right hand, right elbow reaches towards that left knee. Think about drawing your collarbones forward and then twisting a little bit more. Gazes wherever feels good on the neck. Continue to press back through that back heel. See if you can roll a little bit of weight into the big toe edge of that front foot. So really finding equal weight throughout that front foot. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, release your hands to frame your front foot. Exhale, step back, moving through your chaturanga. Inhale into your back bend of choice. Exhale, find a down dog where we start to add on just a little bit more. So the beginning's a little interesting, so listen here. Ground down through that left foot, inhale, lift that right heel high. Bend your knee, open your hip once again. See if you can start to bring equal weight into both hands as you continue to hug that heel in towards your glute. As you exhale, you're gonna draw that knee across towards the elbow, but you're gonna kick it through this time. So think what we did before in our bear crawl. From here, we're gonna open it up to a side plank. So left hand plants as we open up towards the right, right hand sweeps high towards the sky. Lift those hips up, take a deep breath in. Exhale, right hand releases as we return back to that three-legged down dog, right foot lifts. Exhale, we hug it up and in, settling up into our crescent, arriving as we're ready, exhaling out as we settle in. Woo! Inhale, we reach for that left wrist, creating length in the side body. Exhale, we find that side bend over towards the right. Start to energetically hug your thighs together, creating a nice foundation as we find that circle, as we find some extension and flexion through the spine and this nice slow rotation here. We find that back bend as our hands come together. Exhale, we find that revolved crescent in whatever way that looks best for you. Breathe here, returning back to that touchstone, that anchor that is our breath. See if you can find just a little bit more twist and pausing here. Inhale, we're gonna prepare for movement. So start to spin your back heel down and on your exhale, we're gonna open it up finding warrior two. So make any adjustments. Our front heel is intersecting with the middle arch of our back foot. Again, we're sinking down into that front knee. That knee is tracking over towards the pinky toe edge. Arms are extending out and away from the body. The belly button is still pressed up and in. So maybe you notice when you do that, the hips just kind of glide underneath us just a little bit more. On your next inhale, start to sweep your hands towards your low back, interlacing your palms. Draw those knuckles down, finding a lift of your chest. And on your exhale, humble your warrior in this warrior two. So right shoulder comes down towards that right knee. Maybe you use it as a shelf to take a little bit of a break, catch a breather. Maybe you keep it lifted, creating a little bit more strength. Wherever you are, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, we're going to find a halfway lift of the chest, releasing the hands down to frame the front foot. We spin the back toes to frame the front of the mat, step back with that right foot, and then move through your vinyasa if you want it. Again, knowing these are always optional because we always need back and down dog, and this is your practice. When you arrive in down dog, ground down through that right foot, left foot sweeps up and opens it up, finding that open hip. Again, see if you can bring weight into both hands. Continue to draw that heel in towards your glute. Take a deep breath in, preparing for movement. Exhale, start to sweep that left knee across the body, kicking all the way through, just like we did in the beginning. Kind of this lifted ball and triangle. From here, we're gonna find side plank, right hand plants down, foot sweeps back as we open it up, lifting the hips, left hand goes high. Take a deep breath in here, deep breath out. Inhale, release back into that plank, left foot lifts, finding that three-legged down dog. 
Exhale, we step it through, setting up for crescent once again. Find your foundation first and then settle into the pose, knowing that there is no rush here. Again, go through your checkpoints. Are my shoulders away from my ears? Am I pulling and knitting my ribs together? Is my lower belly up and in? Am I pressing back through that back heel? Start to reach over, left hand, clasp right wrist. Inhale, find length. Exhale, side bend. And then as you're ready, finding that slow circle through the spine, sweeping your hands towards the front of your space, around to the opposite side, finding a little bit of a back bend here, palms come together, and exhale, we release down into that revolved crescent. Maybe we find just a little bit more length, maybe we can start to hook that elbow to the outside of that knee. Maybe we pull that belly button up and in just a little bit more. Maybe we can start to draw that top shoulder back a little bit. Continue to find um, that edge of the front foot, that big toe edge, really finding weight all the way through that front foot. From here, again, we're gonna open it up to warrior two. So on your inhale, start to spin that back heel down. Exhale opens up to warrior two and then settle in. And then make any adjustments. So I always have to move my feet. Sometimes I have to expand out my stance just a little bit. Knee is still tracking towards the pinky toe edge. We're expanding out. Shoulders are stacking over the hips. And we're breathing here. As you're ready, start to sweep your hands to your low back, interlacing your hands together, drawing those knuckles down and opening up your heart space towards the sky. Exhale, we humble down, bringing that left shoulder down towards that left knee, letting our head hang heavy. Again, the shoulder can sit on the knee. Maybe we find a little bit of a lift. Notice how that requires the legs to activate just a little bit more to keep us upright. Inhale, find a halfway lift with your chest. Release your hands to bring your front foot. Spin those back toes forward, finding kind of this low lunge. Step back to your plank and then move through your vinyasa if you want it. Meeting back in down dog. We have one more round to go where we add on just a little bit more, but go ahead and find a child's pose here before we get started. So maybe finding five deep breaths. Maybe you get a drink of water. Maybe you return to smoothing out that inhale and that exhale. Knowing that we have just one more round to go where we add on just a little bit more. We're gonna throw in a full um, fallen triangle. And then we have just a little bit of an add on at the end where we find that um, twisted lunge and then a half moon. And then we'll start to slow it down. So you guys are almost there. For this last round, see if you can start to cultivate like a little curiosity and playfulness. So this is a little bit of a different flow, um, a lot of kind of backwards and forwards movement. If you fall, if you wobble, who cares? Just see if you can allow yourself to let that thought just pass by on the cloud and join us as you do. So wherever you are, take one more deep breath in and a nice deep breath out. And then join us back in down dog as we prepare for this very last flow. Whenever you're ready, start to ground down through that left foot. Inhale, lift that right heel high, bend the knee, open the hip once again. As you're ready, start to draw that right knee across the body. This time the foot releases down towards the ground as we sweep that left hand up, finding this fall and triangle. Lift those hips up just a little bit more, finding a little bit more length. And then from here, we move into our side plank. So left hand releases. We plant down through the left hand. We spin onto the pinky toe edge of the left foot. And then we release that right hand high. Now we can keep both feet grounded, or maybe we play with lifting that right foot up just a little bit. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release that top hand, sweeping that right foot up high, finding this three-legged down dog. Inhale here. Exhale, step it forward, meeting in crescent as you're ready. We've been here quite a few times already. So see if maybe you can sink down just a little bit more into that front hip. Pull that right hip back, letting that left hip come forward, squaring off, releasing down. 
Start to reach the right hand over to clasp the left wrist. Inhale, find length. Exhale, find that side body stretch. As you're ready, start to move through this circular journey as you sweep your hands towards the front of your space, rounding out your back, howling out your belly, and then sweeping it back, finding this extension and flexion through the spine. Palms come to touch. Exhale, release down into that revolve crescent. Again, this is the last time we're here, so maybe you find a little bit more of a twist. Maybe you start to open, left hand down, right hand up towards the sky. Take a deep breath in, wherever you are, deep breath out. Inhale, spin that back heel down. Exhale, open it up to a warrior two, settling in here. Make any adjustment that you need. And then settle into that pose. Inhale, sweep those arms back. Clasping your hands, drawing your knuckles down, lifting up through the heart space, gaze goes high. Exhale, release down into that humble warrior. Find a breath here, letting your head be heavy. Inhale, find a halfway lift. Release your hands to frame your front foot, spin your back toes forward. And then just like we did before, plant that left hand and sweep that right hand high, finding that low lunge. From here, we're gonna move into a revolved half moon. So walk that left hand forward just a little bit. Hand can stay lifted in the sky. Launch forward into that front foot. Back foot lifts, finding a twist through the heart space. Back feet are pointing down towards the ground. This is a great place for a block if you have it. It just helps to bring the earth up to you a little bit. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release into a forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale, finds a halfway lift of your spine. Exhale, we fold and we plant our hands. We step or jump back into our chaturanga. Inhaling to our back bend of choice. Exhaling down dog, one more side to go. Inhale, lift that left heel high. Bend the knee, open the hip, pull it in towards the glute. And then as you're ready, start to draw that left knee across the body. Release that foot down towards the ground. Spinning onto that back foot. Right foot reaches up towards the sky. Fall in triangle. Lift that hip up just a little bit more, getting into the obliques. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, release into that side plank. So right hand plants as we spin towards the left side. Again, left foot can plant. Or maybe you lift it for a little bit of an extra challenge as that left hand sweeps high towards the sky. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, left hand releases down towards the mat as that left heel goes high, three-legged down dog. Take a deep breath in here. Exhale, hug that knee up into the chest, step it through. Last crescent of the practice, settling in when you arrive. Left hand starts to reach for the right wrist. Inhale, we find length. Exhale, we side bend. As you're ready, starting that circular journey as we start to sweep the hands forward towards the front of your space, off towards the right, finding a little baby back bend as the palms come together and then we release down into that revolve crescent, hooking that elbow to the outside of the knee. And again, last time we're gonna be here, so maybe you find a little bit more depth. Maybe you're like, lady, I am done. And we don't find any more depth at all. We just settle in exactly where we are. On your inhale, start to spin that back heel down. Exhale, open it up, warrior two, settling in. Make any adjustments and then find your breath. Inhale, start to sweep your hands towards your low back, interlacing, drawing those knuckles down, rolling the shoulders back, lifting through the heart space. Exhale, releasing down into that humble warrior. Finding your breath here. Inhale, find a little lift of the chest, releasing your hands to frame your front foot, spinning your back toes in frame the front of your space. Right hand plants as the left hand twists up and open, low lunge twist once again. From here, moving into that revolved half moon. So right hand maybe walks forward just a little bit. We start to shift some weight into that front foot as our back foot takes flight. So all toes are pointing down towards the ground. We're spinning open through the chest, just like we've been doing all day. 
Hand can be lifted, it can also come to your hip. Wherever you are, take a nice deep breath in. Exhale, forward fold at the top of your mat. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, we fold forward, planting our hands, stepping or jumping back for our very last vinyasa of our practice, if we want it, meaning back and down dog. From here, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Inhale, roll forward to your plank. And as slowly as you can on your exhale, lower all the way to your belly, however you want to get there. When you arrive, untuck your toes, scoot your feet back, and let whatever cheek find the mat, giving yourself a moment of respite and reprieve here. Maybe your hands come along your sides, palms face up. Just pausing here for a moment. Maybe you feel your breath as your lungs expand on the earth, on your mat. And see if you can purposely start to slow it down. Notice how the breath just moves when we're not paying attention to it. But once we bring awareness to it, we can really kind of manipulate it to help us when we need it, to actively slow us down, to relax us, to calm us, to anchor us. From here, we're gonna go into some back bends. So start to bring your chin back to neutral. To get started, we're going to just start with the upper body. So flip your palms to face down. Exhale out any stale air. And on your inhale, lift your chin and your chest and let your arms float away from the earth. Press the tops of your feet down firmly. Use the strength of your spine, lifting up as far as feels comfortable for you. Take a deep breath in, finding a little bit more height. And on your exhale, release, finding the opposite cheek to the mat, allowing yourself to settle back in. Bringing your chin back to neutral, flipping your palms so they face down. We're going to use the strength of our palms as we find a lift just through the legs. So exhale out your breath, and on your inhale, let your legs float away, keeping your chest and your hands grounded down into the mat. Really um, squeeze your glutes, feeling this really nice active posture here. Take another deep breath in. And on your exhale, release your legs back down. Opposite cheek finds the mat, melting in here for just a moment. Now we're gonna do one more round and it's gonna be kind of Yogi's choice. So if you just wanna back bend, you're just gonna go into a locus where you lift your hands and your legs at the same time if you want. If you're feeling like you want a little bit more work, we're gonna get into some oblique core work. And so if you wanna follow along with me, you can, otherwise just find whatever back bend of choice feels good. If you want it, or just like hang out here, this feels pretty good. If you want a little bit more, start to bring your chin back in to neutral, and then bring your hands towards your temples. So your fingertips are gonna find your temples, elbows are gonna go out wide. Exhale out any stale air, and on your inhale, lift just your chest up the way we did the first time. Press your feet down firmly into the mat. Maybe your knees start to float away. That's okay. Pull that lower belly up and in, and then you're on your exhale, you're going to draw your right elbow down towards your right hip. Inhale brings you back to center. Exhale, left elbow, left hip. Inhale, center. Exhale, right. Inhale, center. Exhale, left. Find this three more times. See if you can keep that height and lift in the chest as you continue moving from side to side. So we're finding really active um, extension and flexion through the spine, but we're also getting into that lateral body. So really a full body posture here. One more round moving towards the right and then towards the left. Lift up when you reach center. 
Exhale, release everything out long, finding your favorite cheek to bring to the mat, pausing here for just a moment. And then as you're ready, we're gonna move into Sphinx Pose. So start to bring your chin back to neutral. Start to hug your elbows in towards the side body and then lift your torso up. So you're gonna make a number 11 um, with your hands. Elbows are going to be underneath your shoulders. Fingers are going to be spreading wide. Tops of the toes are pressing down firmly into the mat. Zip your legs together. And then just notice what this feels like here, kind of as a passive sphinx pose. And then just like we've been doing all day, pull your belly buddy up and in, belly button up and in. I don't know what word I just used. And then draw your chest forward. So notice how when you create a little space between your lower belly and your mat, you open up some room for that chest to come forward. So pausing here, just feeling this really active um, back bend. This is a really great posture for any sort of digestive issues. If you have trouble with anxiety, if something really stressful is coming up, this is a great uh, shape to take. See if you can still roll those shoulders down away from your ears, creating a little bit of space. Gaze is wherever feels good on your neck. And then just breathe here. Come back to that anchor. Feel that inhale and exhale expanding in and out, weaving into each other and then into the next breath. So option to stay right here or maybe you start to draw your right knee up. Actually, I'm going to do left side so you can see it. Draw your left knee up towards your left elbow and then flex your foot so you're finding this half frog, um, half sphinx shape. Continue to draw that chest forward and then let yourself just melt into that left hip. So feeling this really active stretch through that left hip flexor. And then option to stay here in this really active stretch, or if you want to start slowing it down and finding um, some re restorative postures, maybe you start to place your hands on top of each other, walk your elbows out, and then release your head down towards the mat, finding this half frog shape, just letting your hips melt down into the mat, continuing to flex that left foot to help protect the knee. Knee can be as high or as low, as far as in. It feels good for you, just being really mindful of what the body tells you it needs right now. And then know that you can always explore. So maybe you go back and forth between more of like an active stretch and more of a restorative stretch. And just notice how the body changes and maybe notice how the breath changes. Wherever you are, see if you can start releasing any activation in any muscle that doesn't need to be. So finding this softening through parts of the body that doesn't need to be holding tension at the moment. Wherever you are, start to lift back up into that sphinx pose, drawing your chest forward, and then start to send that left foot out behind you, bring the tops of the feet down into the mat. Find a lift through your sphinx, once again, coming back to that foundation, and then start to draw that right knee up towards your right elbow, flexing the foot. Again, settle in here into more of an active hip stretch. Letting your knee be as high or as low as feels comfortable for you. Knowing that the two sides are not the same. Option to stay here. Maybe you start to bring hands on top of each other, letting your elbows walk out wide, bringing whichever cheek feels good down on top of your hands, allowing this to become a little bit more restorative. 
And then drop into the body. Notice the subtle differences, maybe in the activation of the muscles, maybe in the softness in the hips and the shoulders between more of an active stretch and a restorative stretch. Noticing how there's really a place for both in our practice. These restorative poses are so important because it allows our mind to integrate with our body. It catches up to the experience that the body just had, which is really vital as we continue to move and our body explores new ways of movement. Wherever you are, start to find a lift through the chest. And then sweep that right leg back once again. And then we're going to just meet in a child's pose. So maybe you start to walk your hands underneath your shoulders as you find a lift coming through tabletop, bringing the knees out wide and the toes to touch, and then settling those hips back, letting the upper body just melt down and towards the mat. And as you arrive, just notice the difference between this child's pose and the child's pose from when you opened your practice. And once again, see if you can go back to our thoughts being like clouds. So just allowing the thoughts that arise to just be acknowledged, but then move past. So we're not labeling or attaching to the differences between this child pose and the first one. We're just creating some subtle acknowledgement. And then as you're ready, you're going to start to walk your hands back towards your knees. And we're just going to come to lie on our back. So however you want to get there, I usually just sweep my feet out towards one side and extend them out long. Um, if you want a little bit more core work, you can pull that lower belly in and, ex and um, come to lie down very slowly. If you're completely over it, just get there however you want. Wherever you are, just allow your spine a moment to settle into this new shape letting your toes roll out for just a moment. And then we're gonna go into a supine twist. So start to hug both knees in towards your chest. Maybe you start to wrap your hands to the outside of your shins, giving them just a little bit of a squeeze here, creating a little bit of compression through the internal organs. And then as you're ready, letting your knees fall away from your chest a little bit, creating more of like a 90 degree. Arms come out like a T, Take a nice deep breath in, and as you exhale, let your knees drop to whichever side feels best to start with. Gaze can stay up towards the sky, or maybe you start to let it drift over towards that opposite arm. And then here, start to make that exhale really twice as long as the inhale. Starting to signal to the body to switch from that sympathetic nervous system, that fight, flight, or freeze into our parasympathetic nervous system, our rest, relax, and digest state. On your next inhale, bring your knees up through center. And as you exhale, let them slowly fall off towards the opposite side. Letting your gaze go wherever feels good. Letting your shoulders feel and do whatever they are naturally, whether it's a slight lift, whether they stay plugged down into the mat. Just notice what your body does naturally without trying to change it. And then go back to that touchstone, that anchor, your breath, continuing to expand out that exhale.
On your next inhale, start to bring your knees back into center. Start to separate your knees towards your shoulders, flipping the soles of your feet up towards the sky for happy baby. Hands can come to the inside of your feet, outside of your feet, or underneath your knees. Wherever you are, just start to draw your knees down towards your shoulders. See if you can keep a softness in your face, in your upper body. Really allowing the activation, the stress to just be the hips and the hip flexors. Maybe you start to settle into stillness here. Maybe you have just a little bit less movement that you need to get out before our final resting posture, in which case maybe you find a slight rocking back and forth. Maybe you extend one leg out long and then the other leg out long. Finding this last posture and making it your own. Staying as long as you need to, as our next posture is going to be our final resting pose, our Shavasana. Releasing your legs out long whenever you're ready. Letting the toes roll away from the body. Letting your hands settle in alongside. Taking a nice deep breath in. And then exhaling as you surrender in towards the mat. Allowing the earth to support you knowing that when it is time, I will guide you back out and you can find this full surrender. Without bringing any sort of movement back into the body, just start to bring your awareness back in to the breath. Noticing how it has found its natural rate and rhythm, this steady pulsating, this anchor that you can bring with you anywhere that you go. And then take a moment to just notice how the physical body feels without any movement. And then start to bring small movement back into the body in whatever way feels best for you. Starting to allow those smaller movements to grow. Again, noticing how the body kind of intuitively knows exactly what it needs to start waking itself back up. Eventually allowing this to grow all the way into a morning stretch, a full body stretch as the toes reach forward and the hands reach back. Then start to draw your knees into your chest, giving them a nice hug and then rolling off to whichever side feels best for you. Taking a moment to pause, allowing yourself to absorb everything from your practice this morning, maybe returning to that intention that you set for practice, allowing it to once again fill you up on your inhale, expand out on your exhale. As you're ready, starting to come back to a cross-legged seated position, 
with as much gentleness and kindness for your body as you can, bring your palms to heart center when you arrive. Take a nice deep breath in, really fill up, let it be the biggest breath you've taken all morning, and exhale, side out, letting it all go. <sighs> Thank you for practicing with me on this Saturday morning. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Namaste.